everybody talks about that and every realtor's heard that oh yeah run my business like a real business so what does that actually even mean that's what we're going to cover right now in today's episode so let me share my screen and i'm going to walk people through this so the first thing that we were walking our agents through uh ben that we coach is you know starting just from the top right so what happens is some of this will be basic for you guys in the audience and then we'll get to the more advanced stuff later you get this commission check, right? And we're just going to use simple math today for $10,000. And the commission check that comes as a result of you closing and selling a house is made out to your broker. It's not made out to you, right? So then this check goes uh, to the broker and that broker then cuts you your Commission check. Now, let's make two um, two distinctions here for a second. This number up here is is what we call uh, GCI or gross commission income. So when we start to build out business plans and we start to really look at the economics and, and how to help an agent net the income that they want to net, it all starts with GCI. So gross commission income is what we charge the homeowner to sell their home. The broker got all of that money. That, that money went to the broker. Broker took their split. And let's just say, for the sake of this conversation, Ben, that this agent is on a 20% uh, split with a... $20,000 cap. Is that fair? Perfect. Yeah. So then when we look at this and we say, okay, based on that, this commission check that this agent would get would be $8,000. So far, so good? Crystal clear. Okay. So then what we have to do is we, this is, this is where I think a lot of agents um, really get confused. And not confused, this is where they're mismanaging their, their money, quite frankly. We would call this top line revenue. So TLR, top line revenue. Because I think a lot of agents think that that commission check is all spendable money. And this is what gets them in trouble with from 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 tax liability uh they they fall short on being able to pay their bills all of those different things this is where they really really get in trouble right so let's talk about what they should consider doing once they get this check all right so they get this check and what we recommend this is what we uh, have agents that we coach do is that check then goes into should anyway go into a business bank account. This is your entity for all the realtors watching, listening. This is realtor.co. Uh, this is your company. It goes into your business bank account. Now, from the business bank account, and I know you're a huge fan of uh, Profit First, which, which I am as well, we have to say, okay, we're gonna pay ourselves first from the revenue that we've generated. And then whatever we have left over will determine how much we can spend on expenses. I think a lot of people do that backwards. Do you wanna add something to that piece? Yeah, um, so in that book, uh, one of the things he talks a lot about is that business bank account is the serving tray. So all the money goes in there and then you you know sort it out off of that serving tray, right? That's right. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to pay yourself. So you're going to pay yourself because you should treat this like you work for your company. And yes, you're the owner of the company, but you should have yourself on some type of payroll. Okay. So what do we, what do we actually recommend here? I don't think they should go over anything more than 50%, right? And they'll see why in just a second. So if your paycheck based on however many commission checks you get or top line revenue, we recommend that you do not pay yourself anything more than 50% of your top line revenue. So you're gonna get paid first. And in this case, this is $4,000. This is your income. 
This is what you get to go and do whatever it is that you do. Buy cars, watches, houses, whatever the case may be. We'll show this to you on an annual basis. We're just breaking down what we call unit economics. Unit being one transaction, one closing. So when we say unit economics, this is just off one closing. You can scale this out. Then the next thing that we have to do is set aside money for taxes. And taxes, because you got no choice around that, we're going to say you should um, budget for 30%. And I don't know if you're doing the math on your side, if you want to do that. that would, yeah, all right, that'd be great. 8, that'd be 2400 Okay. $2,400, this would be set aside for taxes so that at the end of the year, you've got money to pay your tax bill or if you're paying quarterlies or however your CPA has you set up. And most of you probably won't even get to 30%. So there's a nice cushion in there, but that way you make sure that you never ever have um, any issues come, come the end of the year, right? So then what we have to say is we have money for expenses. And this is where we budget. This is why we always tell an agent, you have 20% allotted for your expenses. And so in this case, that is what, 1600? Yep. This is what you have to spend on your business. So that's what we, we love a lot with the profit first model is you pay yourself. Again, we don't wanna go over anything more than 50%. We have 30% uh, 30 set aside for taxes, which leaves you your budget. This is your budget, right? To do whatever you're gonna do with. You're gonna uh, marketing, you're gonna do events, you're gonna invest in coaching, you're gonna invest in uh, websites, you're gonna invest in lead generation, you're gonna invest in people, humans, ISAs, assistants. That's the amount of money that you have. And so now what we've established is when we look at this, and we say, okay, this is why we always tell, tell, a, tell an agent is your profit margin is always 50% of, of, of what you make, right? Because it's 8,000 divided by what you pay yourself. This is where we want, um, let me back that up. This is where we want 50% margin or more, or more, right? Because as you make more, as you scale this out, Ben, I think that's the key thing is that as you scale, your margins can increase. Well, why? Well, because your expenses don't, uh, a lot of you have fi fixed expenses. So 20% might fall to 10%, might fall to 7%. So we wanna build, you wanna build that out really quick for them or is there anything you wanna add to this so far? Yeah, let's do that. That'd be great. Oh, all right, cool. So let's just say, um, we're gonna say Agent Bob has a goal to net in his pocket, bottom line, his $150,000, right? So this is, this is what he wants to be able to spend in his, in his uh, pocket. Well, the first thing we have to look at is, okay, what is his average commission? And we just did the math, right? We just said his average commission, we're looking at GCI was $10,000. So this means Bob has to close 15 deals, right? So that's that's how he has to, no, no, I'm sorry. See, I almost screwed that up, you know? So, so I almost screwed this up. So how do we figure out the actual GCI goal? So watch this. This is the whole point. So here's what we have to do. Here's the equation to figure out how much GCI. One and, and is I might even you know yeah. we, we, let's do it this way. Let's do it both ways, just yes. because I think that's the best way to understand it fully. Because that's the way people are used to doing it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. If you totally. Look up above, man, you look at that and you're like, holy cow, Brandon, four thousand dollars a month. I can't live off of that. I need the whole eight thousand. What we're about to outline. Is, is based on what do you feel like you need to net? Well, I need to net, Brandon, $150,000 a year. And that's where we're gonna pick up so that you understand where your GCI needs to be 
so that you don't, um, so that you can net what you need to net. That's right. Because that's exactly right. Thank you for that. Is people are building their business plan off of a net income and they're always falling too short. This is why they never have enough money. Right. So step one is to decide, okay, what is that net income to Ben's point? What is the monthly income that you need to, that you need to live off of? And in this case, Bob is saying 12,500. In the example above, again, it was unit economics. It was just a random number. You sell one house. Now we're building this plan off of you earning 12,500 per month. Well, how do we do that? Step two, we have to add our broker split. So for Bob's case, right, we said that he had a 20% split and he caps at 20K. So in this case, we need to add 20,000 on top of the 150 in order for us to net 150. Then what, we, what do we have to do? We have to add our taxes. And we said we should budget 30%. In this case, off of 150, we have to add, what is that? 45,000. Yeah, 45,000 for taxes. And then lastly, we said we should budget for, we have to add expenses and no more than 20%. 30,000. So now this is 30,000. So now when we add all of this up, what do we get? We've got one, yeah, what do we have? 150 plus 20 plus 45 total, plus 30. total of 245 and this yeah. would be our GCI. So that is how we build out a business plan for a real estate agent because everything is based off of this GCI number. And so when we say, okay, 145 and the goal was to make 150,000, just divide the two for me. So yeah, 61% 61 margin. This is a very, very, what we would call a healthy business. Because again, what was the goal? The goal was 50% margin. So if we just do uh, the numbers to your point backwards, and we say, okay, if if I have to generate 245,000, right, in GCI, now how many closings do I need to do if my average commission is 10,000? right? Mm -hmm. And so that means we have to do how many transactions? 45. About 25, 24. right? Yeah, yeah, 24 or 25. So we'll call it 25 deals. And if we subtract out your expenses, which are 30k, we subtract out your taxes, which we said are 45,000. And we subtract out your cap, which is 20,000. This is the easier way for people to see it. You're left with 150,000. That true. is, right? Yeah, and most people start with the 150. I wanna make 150 to your point earlier, but just to put like really double down on that, they start with the 150, they do the transaction and then they start spending money and they're like, man, I don't have enough money, I don't get it. I'm making 150,000, what's wrong? Well, you've, you've got a business, you've got expenses, you've got all these things that you might not be used to having before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, and, and what we were saying before is if you want more margin, which I know all of you do, you want more money, this is what we were saying before. If we just looked at 20%, which is just average, and that's $30,000 off 150, right? Divided by 12. Well, that's $2,500 a month in, t in, in expenses. You might not have that, right? So if you have a goal of making 500,000, you might not have 100,000 of expense, which is 20% that's where you get really get to see this thing scale. And so when we see an agent, that's why we focus on so heavily, Ben, helping agents get to a six figure income so they can accomplish a minimum of 50% margin. Because if they make less than that, they'll start going below 50% margin. And that's where it's really, really tough to, to, um, 
to make a to make a living in this business of real estate sales if you're not at, at least a hundred thousand dollars or more. So, right? You want to add anything to that? Yeah. The beauty about the business model that that we coach to is the fact that we're not spending money to generate leads. If you were spending money to generate leads, that would go up with you, right? If you're buying leads, etc., you've got to spend more to make more, right? Your your return on your dollar. In our case, we focus on skills with our with our agents and we focus on systems, we focus on tools and those things and effort, right? So those things are fixed. And as your skills get better, right? Those tools that you paid for up front, that stays the same. It's a hundred bucks, whether you make a hundred thousand or you make a million. So the more you make your margins just drastically change. Yeah, unlike, I mean, I think that's a really good point that we can't leave out. This is now we're talking about business models, right? Unlike a business that's predicated on pay per lead, Mm -hmm. If you're on a pay per lead basis uh, or even a pay per click basis, as you sell more, you spend more and the opposite, it's inverting. Your profit margins going down, the more successful you become. Exactly. You know, and and that's why we, we, we call it kind of like the golden handcuffs. It's like, you need to keep spending the money in order to keep getting the closing so you continue cash flow because that's the danger of an agent really uh, building a business that's 100% predicated on like internet leads. Mm -hmm. It's very, very dangerous business model, you know, because as soon as, as soon as one of those companies changes its algorithms or changes something or uh, you stop spending the money, your business is gone, right? And so, yes, for me, a minimum, if I'm, if I'm going to coach a real estate agent and we're going to uh, look at the P&L, a minimum is 50% margin. If we're not at 50% margin, we have to make some changes. We've got to tweak some things to increase your profitability. Otherwise, you're working way too hard for way too little. And honestly, Ben, there's too many other things someone can do outside of real estate where they make a lot more money having to work a lot, uh, uh, not as hard.